Okay, so um, in practical terms, like um, if you're going from having like belief systems and then you're going into advanced spiritual work where you're letting go of everything, um, like how do you find the balance between the two if you're going from one extreme to the other extreme? You're going into advanced spiritual work from having solid belief systems within the ego. And uh, I come from an addictions background, you know, the, you know, definitely food was my primary addiction, had other addictions, work as well and other stuff. So uh, on a practical level, if you're coming in, if you've been in, in, in your belief system and you suddenly get catapulted into very advanced spiritual work very quickly, and you're even trying to let go of all thoughts, and there's a period of disorientation and confusion, and, uh, and it's like... The, and you know, suddenly one is aware I have to get let go of donuts, I have to let go of being a workaholic, I have to let go of making to do lists, I have to let go of chewing gum, I have to let you know, and it becomes like so extreme. Is there like a balance? Or otherwise, you know, like if you went in 12 step fellowships and you knew every single 12 step fellowship and you tried to let go of every single addiction straight away, like okay, I'm going to stop alcohol, drugs, I'm going to stop food, I'm going to stop sex, I'm going to stop uh, my to do list. It can feel like, you know, is it, you know, is that, you know. So is, what about balance? And I'd say in those cases, and I am in the 12 steps, like balance, I mean, letting go of the big stuff uh, as much as you can handle, but it's okay if there's some small stuff going on. Like a quick analogy is like when I help people with food, if they're giving up all sugar and they're having the odd cup of coffee, every now and then I'll tell them like don't worry about the odd coffee as long as it's not like 100 coffees a day with ten spoons of sugar but uh, you know it's like okay you're, you've given up all of this so don't worry too much if, about you know this very tiny thing for the time being we can handle that later on so I guess it would be like if someone's into marathon running non-stop every day and then they said, well, I, I walk to the toilet. Is that too much? I'd say, <laughs> I'd say, okay, you know, that you're not running for like, tw you know, eight hours a day and you're just doing a few minutes. Like, don't, you know, don't, eat it. don't worry about it. Um, so um, when you're making huge progress, I would say like if I'm giving up addictions or several addictions at the same time, then I would, um, uh, it's like taking what you can handle with the support of what you've got but not going to the point where you're cutting out so much that your ego might hijack the process and derail the process, if that makes sense, yeah. So, I mean, if I was to get, you know, if I was drinking alcohol, drugs, and eating donuts all at the same time, uh, and I cut them all out, and I wanted to be 100% perfect, my ego might rebel so much that, um, that you know, so if there's these tiny things which are, you know, not that big, that would allow me to get through most of it because I'm clearing so much. You know, these tiny things, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about them. Otherwise, if, or the ego may go into perfectionism, like total body. If you, whatever you're clearing, if you're clearing a huge amount, that's good. Is that clear? What, what if the ego uses exactly that explanation to uh, allow some behaviors just because, you know, I'm dealing with so much stuff, so once in a while I can have this and putting into I think uh, in, in that place that's a good thing I think that's why it's good to have mentors or groups or people to sort of put things in context to make things clear you know like uh, like this is what I was sort of saying like if you're giving up chocolate and and you said to me I'm having you know one two coffees a day I'd say like don't worry about it but if it was like but if you have a mentor, they can say, don't worry about it. But then if you suddenly said, like, you're having two coffees and you're giving up all, all sugary foods, and the next day you said you had 700 coffees and you're putting sugar in every one, then I'd say, like, okay, you let your ego come in and hijack the process. So I think then it's good, unless you're able to do it because you've got a strong enough uh, connection to, to source, to your intuition, to be self-honest. If you haven't got the capacity when you're giving up to be self-honest, then I think having a guide or a group just to monitor whether you've gone, you've let the ego, let the ego in, and now it uses that as justification to go to an extreme with an addiction. Because uh, when you, like if I was, if I was even on the level of, if I was eating 100 donuts a day, and I, I went to just having 
uh, one cup of tea with some sweetener in it, you know, that's still huge progress. And then I can let the tea with sweetener go, you know, uh, in a week. But if it's like tea with sweetener today and then two teas with two sugars tomorrow, and then the next day it's five teas with, and, and a donut as well, then it's going in the wrong direction. You want to feel like you're letting go and making progress in letting go of things, not like you're letting a back door in for the ego to quickly escalate on what you're letting go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah.